So I'm going to talk to you with uh, two biases. Uh, first, I'm working for the Ministry of Health in Quebec. So this is one perspective. And the other one, as you mentioned, I'm still a psychiatrist uh, working on the ground of oper uh, operation. So we'll see. So I've been called, asked to talk to you about uh, these two questions, the challenges in the implementation of collaborative mental health care across Canada on the you know, managerial perspective and the kinds of, of evidence that are needed by policymakers. Those are, those are the two questions I'm going to be talking about. This is a list of challenges. Uh, it's quite subjective. I'm going to go through all of them one by one and we'll see. Uh, first, a huge shift in paradigm. Uh, with collaborative care, we're shifting from a provider-driven philosophy to a population-driven system. Maybe you've noticed that, but in the 20, 20th century, the healthcare system has been built mostly for acute illnesses. Uh, what was built, uh, I think, the founding myth for, for this was that we, we thought at some point that we could master illnesses and that we could master the uh, control of the environment and be able to predict the outcome. And a lot of money has been invested into hospital, medical specialities, and acute care to the expense of chronic, uh, chronic care, in fact, and community-based uh, care. And this is one of the challenges. When I'm talking about the end of the era of the 4T plan, I'm talking about the end of the traditional scientific management. For a long time, let's think about the MBA, for instance, they think they're kind of uh, 007 able to do all kind of thing because you know, they go from a point A to B and C and they can predict what, what will happen, the outcome. Well, uh, it's a little bit like uh, if you think about the asylum at the time, we were able to to control everything. Let's think about one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Uh, Miss Rat Ratchet, that was her name. She was in charge, huh? and she was in control, and you could predict what would happen the morning after, and the next morning, and so on and so forth. Everything was under control. And But now we're in a world where the supply chain now is a network. This is no longer, the institution is no longer able to provide all the services, so you have to work in the network. This is a huge change, shift in paradigm. I don't know if you ever heard about what we call complicated context and complex context. Complicated context, context the archetype is sending a rocket on the moon. And what you need is experts. You need uh, protocols, blueprint, uh, if you succeed to send a rocket on the moon, you may succeed again. Maybe there, is, there are two or three ways of sending this rocket on the moon, and this is, that may be re replicated if you succeed uh, at least once. Hospital, medical specialties are, like, are, are working in a, in a complicated context. Collaborative care belongs to the complex context, and the archetype is raising a child. There's no protocol. It doesn't mean that we don't know what to do. I mean, we have some hints. But what works with the first child will not necessarily work with the second child. Collaborative care, collaborative care that works in Hamilton meaning maybe doesn't work in Quebec City, at least not the same way. And when you... Uh, there's a pediatrician in Montreal. His name is uh, Dr. Julien. And it's used to say that it takes a village to raise a child. So it takes many systems, autonomous systems, that will interact uh, with each other. And at the end, there will be this child, and a young man, or maybe a student on the street here in Montreal. And uh, <coughs> this is the, the outcome is more or less predictable, because you're not working in a, in a controllable environment. So, in, in collaborative care, this is the same way. You're working with inter interdependent uh, system. You're working, the control is more distributed than in traditional ma management, and there is uh, more self-organization than in a classical top-down hierarchy. Uh, well, 
Palliative care has a search for new form of life. I was in, I had in mind the fact that uh, it's a bit like the Star Trek uh, show. Uh, you know, the mission of uh, Captain Kirk was to go out there and uh, explore for the unknown. And I think what Nick is talking about and what we're talking about here is the search for new models of organization, new form of life. Uh, because uh, with budget cuts and everything that happened, uh, I mean, we're looking for ways of organizing, organizing ourselves uh, more efficiently. Second challenge is the emergence of an horizontal governance. Uh, collaborative care is mostly a bottom-up phenomenon. Uh, so it's, it's, this is a challenge to manage it from the top. Uh, how do we do that without harming or without, uh, uh, yes, harming? Because let's think about the archetype of the child. Uh, if you were to raise a child with protocol or blueprint, would not work, and uh, the same way with collaborative care. So it's uh, it's uh, another mindset. The power structure uh, is uh, much more diffused than uh, what we're used to in the traditional uh, hierarchy, uh, you know, the vertical one. Uh, at, by the end, the manager has to see himself or herself as being part of the network and not at the top of the hierarchy. Otherwise, it won't work. <coughs> So it's a new world of management, it's a new power structure, it's a new power structure as well for the care, uh, caretakers as well, psychiatrists and so on. And from the ground will emerge some kind of uh, horizontal governance that may challenge the uh, uh, legitimacy of, uh, let's say, ministerial policies. And uh, so there's a tension between what, uh, what comes from the ground and what is uh, Expected, expected from the top. Uh, in a way, we could see that the Minister, the Minister of Health has lost control over what's going on on the ground, for the best or the worst. And in a complex context, somehow the outcome is unpredictable. I'm not saying that we don't know what we do. I'm saying that to a larger ex extent, it cannot be driven by protocol as much as it is in hospital, because it's left to the, uh, the will and the resources and the capacity of many inter, uh, independent uh, organizations or actors in the community. So the outcome is unpredictable. Uh, we may, you may encounter some butterfly effect. Which doesn't, you don't want to have a butterfly, butterfly effect when you send a rocket on the moon. I mean, you want a consensus around the table, no butterfly effect. But in collective care, that may happen. I like this one. The leadership is cut off from the management. This is a tough one. Uh, what, what we see, that's why I, I've written the name of Henry Mintzberg, so he's a, a great uh, professor of management, just so that I, I don't feel alone with that. <laughs> but it's as if the brain is cut off from the hand. If you're the leader, of course you know what to do, and you're looking for some manager out there who will know how to do the, right, the things right. And uh, by the end, it's very really disengaging, disengaging for people to have a leader who doesn't manage. This is a personal opinion, but uh, according to what I've served, observed, there's a lot of that going on in the healthcare system. Not only in the healthcare system, but in other industries as well. And uh, uh, collaborative care cannot happen if you don't manage it, and if you don't know how to manage that if you don't know how to be, let's say, a network manager. And most of the time, um, uh, leadership is it's cut off from management. It's uh, very, very striking when you look at it. Uh, well, uh, Nick have addressed already this uh, issue, the billing models or, uh, of a physician. Uh, of course, when you pay for a fee for service, uh, I don't think it's helped for a population-based or driven uh, system. Uh, if you want to enlarge uh, the, the vision of the, uh, the doctors or the physician, uh, then uh, I think we, we should have to, we'll have to implement the right or the appropriate financial incentive. This is one challenge. Funding, well, we thought that the, the 20th century basically was uh, dedicated for uh, acute illness at hospital, and now, now we're shifting to uh, uh, community-based uh, services. 
In order to do that, we'll need uh, transition form, uh, transitional funds. And, uh, uh, and this, is a, this is a challenge in itself uh, because uh, people, I think, are still um, very uh, attached, let's say, to the dream or the myth that uh, we can cure everything. And maybe they're not so enthusiastic about being said that, well, you may have to live with some, let's say, more or less chronic illnesses and you'll have to deal with it. And you know what? You, we're going to use self-management with you and you're going to be involved. The last one, collaborative care is a moving target. It's, it has become a buzz expression. I mean, when you ask people, are you doing collaborative care? Of course I do, sir. Okay, show me. Oh, this is it. Oh, okay. How do we know this is collaborative care? Uh, and I think collaborative care is more a strategic vision, um, more a journey than a destination. So it cannot be driven by a protocol or a blueprint. Uh, <coughs> to some extent, it's hardly re replicable from one city to another city because you know it has to uh, adapt to the local condition. And at times, you know, the people are not the same, and the way it's going to organize all these systems will organize with each other. Uh, won't fit in other place. Um, the last one is how do we know this is a collaborative, collaborative care model? And if we if we do if we know how do we know this is a, a cosmetic compliance to make major trends of policies? You know, people want to please people working in the Ministry of Health, and they do that at the expense of the local needs. That may be so. Second question. The kinds of evidence that are needed by policymakers. This is the last slide. Well, I really like it. That's why I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, key, uh, key elements in network management. I know uh, I've gone very quick, uh, quickly uh, through the uh, how do we manage in a complex context and how bureaucracy of the 21st century should uh, redesign themselves and. Uh, so we should learn more about network management that will take over to some extent, not always, uh, take over the, uh, uh, the role of the uh, traditional vertical hierarchy. Uh, Nick talked about the economic benefits and costs. Money talks. We still need to prove or to sustain the vision that it's, uh, it's worthwhile and it's, uh, it's worth the, the effort and the money. Uh, not that we'll, well, we'll save money, but we'll gain also um, some benefit for the, the well-being and the wellness of uh, the population. Measurement of collaborative care, uh, how do I know this is it? Identification and measures of outcome. What are the measures that we should be using <coughs> that would be really worth not only for the managers, but for the clinician as well? What would make sense? That would be really, really rewarding to have. Mapping of the collaborative mental health care experiences across Canada. As I said, well, I didn't so, say so, the, the comp complicated contexts are the domain of experts. Complex contexts are the domain of emergence. So it's uh, not really so much fact-based, it's more pattern-based. And what you want to see and find are the uh, worth, worth experience that happen, you want to uh, scrutinize. It's, a, it's a, an appreciative inquiry. You want to, to, as a manager, you want to hear about what's working well and why. Of course, you want to hear what doesn't work and you want to knock it down. But basically, you want to hear about what's working well so you could spread the good news across the system. Thanks. <laughs>